Welcome. Welcome to tonight's screening of Telly Like a Woman, an event devised and hosted by the Permanent Mission of Italy to the UN, UN Women, and the non-for-profit organization We Do It Together, with co-sponsorship from a cross-regional group of member states, Argentina, Chile, Japan, United Kingdom, and the United States. These are all of the countries where the cast of the movie is from or where the movie was filmed. The timing of tonight's event is no coincidence. We just kicked off celebrations for Women's History Month, and we are a few days away from International Women's Day and the opening of the 67th CSW, the UN Commission on the Status of Women. We hope that by sharing these inspiring and empowering stories from an impactful and inclusive stage, such as the UN General Assembly Hall, we will help their message resonate with an even wider audience. Each of us can play a role to affirm women's rights and the private sector can too. This is why, before we get our night started, we want to play a message from our event's main sponsors. The Global Compact member in Tessa San Paolo is honored to be here with you. The leading banking player we stand with and for women we stand for their empowerment, for their equity, and we are proud to support Applause together with the film Tell It Like a Woman. Both give agency to women and to our core values of inclusion. Thank you for sharing this moment with us. At Tilbe, we feel it's our responsibility to leave a message and tell story made of people and values. We strongly believe that women must have the same opportunity as men. We are committed to produce more content driven by women. We would like to thank Intesa San Paolo and Iervolino and Lady Bocardi Entertainment for their commitment and support to our event. We will now play a special message from Diane Warren and Sophia Carson, two exceptional artists and women. They deserve a big applause. They are nominated for an Oscar in the category of Best Original Song from Telly Like a Woman. Hello everyone, I'm Sophia Carson here with the legend herself, the incomparable Miss Diane Warren. Thank you, Sophia. I'm so sorry that I can't be there with you guys tonight, but I would like to thank the permanent mission of Italy to the United Nations, UN Women, We Do It Together, and the United Nations for hosting such an important event. Applause is a song very dear to me because it is a global anthem for women. I would like to dedicate this song to all of you and let's do it together. The fight for women's rights does not and must not fall on the shoulders of women alone. This is humanity's fight, where men and women come together to fight for a world where equality and gender parity is not the exception, but a beautiful and just reality. Applause and tell it like a woman harness the extraordinary power of art, music, and cinema to help change our world. Give yourself some applause. I now invite to the stage Italy's permanent representative to the UN, Ambassador Maurizio Massari, for his welcoming remarks. Good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, I welcome you to this uh, special uh, event that Italy is uh, hosting with the UN Women, represented today by the Executive Director, uh, Sima Bahus. Uh, thank you, Sima, for being with us. And the nonprofit, uh, We Do It Together, represented by its founder, Chiara Tilesi. I'd like to thank the Under Secretary General, uh, Melissa Fleming, for being with us as well as my other fellow speakers and co-sponsoring missions, the ambassadors of Argentina, Chile, Japan, UK, and the United States. Last but not least, I welcome to the UN the all-women cast of directors and lead actresses that will join in the conversation 
after the screening. March at the UN and in the world is a traditionally a month to spotlight women. And what better way to do it than leaving them the stage, letting them tell us their stories. This film touches upon a theme of universal concern for each of us. Gender equality, women empowerment, a fight um, against uh, women discrimination and violence. A universal theme uh, which uh, does not know borders, west, east, north, south, and uh, which is a part also, of course, of uh, our uh, common agenda, the 2030 agenda. It's part of uh, our common destiny, and it's something that uh, unites us all. And we all know that uh, to achieve this goal of gender uh, equality, uh, we are lagging behind. Ac according to the UN assessment, it will take, at the current pace, 300 years to bridge the gap in terms of gender equality. Therefore, our common commitment has to grow stronger until we reach the ultimate goal of zero violence and gender equality. Together, we can make it happen. And cinema speaks a universal language, understandable to all. Tell it like a woman sends a powerful message already in its title. Women's stories through women's voices. I hope you will uh, enjoy the, the film, and I wish you a very nice evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Massadi, for your inspiring words and your effective role as advocate of women's rights. I am honored to welcome to the stage the UN Undersecretary General for Global Communications, Melissa Fleming, for her opening remarks. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. It's so wonderful to see this room packed uh, for this amazing film and for the cause of women's equality in film. So His Excellency Ambassador Maurizio Massari, permanent representative of Italy to the United Nations, Her Excellency Maria del Carmen Squiff, who is the permanent representative of Argentina to the United Nations, and our other sponsors, including Sima Bahus, who's the executive director of UN Women, Chiara Tilisi, producer and founder of We Do It Together. Filmmakers, actors, film fans, it's great to have you all gathered here in the General Assembly Hall uh, of the United Nations. Cinema has tremendous power, and everyone here knows that. Stories told on the big screen stick. They stick to our minds, and they stick to our attitudes, and they also stick to our actions. Movies inspire people and they drive progress, and that's how they can change the world. But they can also do the opposite. They can reinforce harmful narratives, and they can also entrench inequalities. We are used to a world in which the male gaze directs the movie camera, a world where women rarely get to tell their stories. In sto instead, stories are told about them, Stories in which, for the most part, the gender power dynamic is seriously out of whack. We all know the tropes, the stories that objectify and marginalize women, and exceptions only prove the words, uh, the rules. UN Women says that only 23% of films feature women protagonists. So think about that. 23% of films feature women protagonists. 31% um, of speaking roles are held by women. This movie, Tell It Like a Woman, is a rare and powerful exception, a film in which women tell their own stories, and stories that aren't tropes or stereotypes. They're stories of real women struggling, overcoming adversity, and getting back on track and giving back. 
So taken together, these stories offer a powerful message of strength and unity. But unfortunately, these kinds of films remain all too rare. There are signs of hope, of course, and signs that the industry is changing. Female-driven movies are going mainstream, and films made and, and made by and starring women are making a big impact. But there's no denying change has been slow, and this isn't just a film industry problem. And so allow me just to expand this just a little bit because we are at the UN and uh, I do want to use this opportunity on behalf of women because wherever we look, the narrative gets women wrong. Sometimes it ignores them altogether. It's not just in movies, it's also in politics, it's in sports, it's in business, and it's also in scientists. And women are underrepresented also in media. Only 4% of news stories clearly challenge gender stereotypes. And the rest reinforce inequality. And these are the stories that society tells itself about women. Harm, disrespect, violence, and marginalization are the results. So the UN Secretary General has said and repeatedly stressed that everywhere in the world, women and girls face the greatest threats and the deepest harms. The pandemic uh, sparked an epidemic of, dom of domestic abuse. Worsening conflicts around the world have also hit women and children hardest. Women's rights are backsliding and women's voices are disappearing from view. And unfortunately, also authoritarians and extremists are weaponizing misogyny to silence critics. Last year, UNESCO surveyed women journalists around the world and 73% of them said they had experienced online violence. I know I'm throwing a lot of percentages at you, but just try to fathom this. If you're a woman, you're a journalist, you're working online, three quarters of you are likely to have experienced online violence. Um, and 20% had been attacked offline too. So the aim of these attacks is clear. It's to crush female voices and shrink democratic spaces. They're targeted because they're on the front lines of the fight for equality. And some of the most vicious attacks come when women are standing up for women's rights. And these attacks are making women think twice. In the worst cases, women decide not to raise their voices, to join politics, or to pursue leadership roles. And the effect has been described that, that the effect that people use to describe this is a chilling effect. Yet, sorry, I'm not going to leave you with just such grim news and statistics. There are many brave women who refuse to be silenced. They persist with courage, resilience, and commitment, and we owe them a better response. When women speak up about abuse, online or offline, we don't want them to be victim blamed. Uh, we are, they're still being asked, did they provoke the attacks? No. Online, especially, we need a sea change in awareness to shift to the perpetrators, those who are abusing the women online and the enablers of online violence. And we're asking the social media companies uh, to stop shirking their responsibilities here. Uh, stop making business off of misogyny. So my team and I, just to say, are working on this at the UN. I lead communications for the UN, and I have to say it's become so important for me, we're seeing an information ecosystem that is toxic, and we need to clean it up. And women should not be the biggest victims. Um, so we're, we're leading a process on developing a code of conduct on inform information integrity on digital platforms. And we're going to be looking at ways to limit the impact of gendered disinformation. It's become a new term, gendered disinformation. And uh, so we hope um, to make the internet safer for women and all marginalized groups and thereby make the offline space safer so that creativity can flourish, women be can become leaders. Um, and so we have a long way to go. Um, if we want to get there faster, we need to change the narrative about women. And this means more women in film, on screen and off screen. So this movie and this event are a fantastic contribution to that, this work, and I'm sure 
After you've seen this film, you will agree with me. We can unite and inspire women to occupy the space on screen and offline, and maybe we can begin to change the story that society is trying to tell us about us. Thank you. Thank you, Under Secretary General, for your powerful remarks and for sharing your perspective as an expert in communication. We truly value your work to create a trusted and safe ecosystem for information and to safeguard women's rights all over the world. And now, let's welcome the Executive Director of, Human, uh, of UN Women, Sima Bahus, for her opening remarks. Good evening, Under Secretary General Melissa Fleming, Ambassador Maurizio Massari, Ambassador Carmen Swift, Miss Chiara Telisi, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. UN Women is honored to co-host today's special event on the screening of Tell It Like a Woman. I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you in this chamber. We are joined this evening by extraordinary women, including members of NGOs and civil society organizations, academics, media, students, and especially the actors and directors and producers who are working to move women from object to subject in film. I would like to congratulate Chiara Telisi for making this film and Diana Warren and Sophia Carson for the song, Applause, in the film that has received an Oscar nomination. Congratulations. <laughs> Excellencies in the media industry and as we heard uh, from uh, USG, Melissa Fleming, also, globally, only 31% of speaking roles are held by women. 21% of filmmakers are women. And 23% of films feature women protagonists. This must change. Women make up half the world's population. Yet, they remain invisible in many sectors. The world is not on track to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals, including Sustainable Development Goal 5 on gender equality. There is worldwide major pushback against women's rights and against girl rights. We all must push back against the pushback. Ensuring that women are visible in the arts is imperative to this goal. This film comes at a crucial time. We witnessed how the COVID-19 pandemic turned from a global health emergency into a socioeconomic crisis with profound effects on women and girls. More recently, we have seen how the many crises impacting the world, such as those in Turkey and Syria, in Ukraine, in Afghanistan, and in many other places of the world, they ultimately impact women and girls differently, and in many cases, more. To better respond to these crises and to our common development challenges, we need to include women's voices and the full force of their energy and leadership. I thank the Permanent Mission of Italy for inviting you and women to be a co-sponsor of this important film screening. Italy is a close partner of you and women and a powerful advocate for gender equality. And I thank you, Your Excellency Ambassador Maurizio Massari. I also thank the permanent mission of Argentina for co-sponsoring this. Argentina is also a very close partner of UN Women 
and I thank Her Excellency Ambassador Squaff for being here with us this evening despite the very busy period of facilitating the agreed conclusions of CSW 67. We wish you, Ambassador, and CSW 67 all the success. Dear friends, we celebrate two major events next week, the 67th Commission of the Status of Women and International Women's Day. The priority theme of CSW 67 this year, it's innovation, technological change, and education in the digital age for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. The theme calls on us to take a human-centric approach to digitalization. The advances that technology and innovation make possible must be pursued with the feminist principles of inclusion, intersectionality, and systematic change as their goal. We must fight technology-facilitated violence against women in all its forms. This year's International Women's Day is similarly focused on digital innovation and technology for gender equality. And we all, together, must ensure that innovation, technology, digitalization has women and girls at the very center of it. I thank you all for coming to watch this film on your Friday evenings. My thanks also go to all those who made this possible. Please continue to amplify and carry messages of equality, whether on single motherhood, on ending domestic violence, on LGBTQ+, so beautifully conveyed in this film, alongside the many others that confront us. Please continue to do this good work and to amplify the voices of women and girls everywhere. I thank you and enjoy the film. Thank you. Thank you, Executive Director, for your steadfast leadership of such a crucial UN entity. I now invite Argentina's permanent representative to the UN, Ambassador Maria del Carmen Skeff, for her opening remarks. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, friends and colleagues. Thank you so much for joining this special event to reflect on the importance of women's empowerment and autonomy. Right before the International Women's Day, on the opening of the 67th is CSW. First of all, I want to thank Italy and the UN Women for this great initiative. From my perspective, it is essential to use the power of art and image to create awareness at the United Nations. In effect, women and girls in all their diversity are suffering in different parts of the world. They are facing very difficult realities, so it is important to give them a voice here at the United Nations. In that sense, I believe that the power of a film is the power to represent our societies, where inequalities exist, where gender-based violence exists, and women are killed because of the fact of being women. It is time to say enough is enough. No one less, ni una menos. Despite this very pessimistic scenario, as a woman, as a feminist and Latin American diplomat, I want to tell you that women have stopped being afraid and modestly a revolution towards equality is beginning. That is why I am sure that the field will shake us, but it will also bring us hope that we can move towards equal societies with the same opportunities and the same rights for everyone. We are proud that one of the short stories has been directed by a talented Argentine filmmaker, Lucia Puenzo. 
and the name of her uh, piece of art is Lago Negro. And we congratulate the nonprofit organization we do it together for creating this field that brings uh, together a diverse group of directors from different countries. Finally, I would like to say that our strong national policies and commitment on gender equality are reflected in the international space, where Argentina holds the vice presidency of the Commission on the Statute of Women. Thank you, everyone, for being here today and engaging in this very important activity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ambassador, for your meaningful contribution to tonight's event, and best of luck on your critical role at the CSW this year. I now give the floor to producer, director, and the founder of We Do It Together, the nonprofit film production company dedicated to the empowerment of women and minorities that brought us the 2023 Academy Award nominee for Best Original Song, Tell It Like a Woman, Chiara Tilesi. Her work has always focused on creating social change in the world through film, media, and art, as Tell It Like a Woman perfectly witnesses. In her own words, the beauty of this film is that the stories of women are very inspiring and diverse, but at the same time have a global impact. The floor is yours. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight to celebrate women together. I would like to thank the permanent representative of Italy to the United Nations, Ambassador Maurizio Mazzari, and its mission spokesperson, Ludovica Murazzani, USG Melissa Fleming, the UN Women and its director, Sima Baus, and all the governments that joined us in this important endeavor. In 2015, I founded We Do It Together, a nonprofit film production company where men and women are united to change the way women are represented in media, from an object to a subject. Why does this matter? Because a culture is made of repetition of images, ideas, concepts, which create a belief system, and ultimately will create the cultural DNA of a society. We could even say, we are what we repeatedly see. So, what do we see about women in the world? What is the status of women? In 2022 is the year where women make, for the first time in history, 10% of the CEO in the most successful 500 companies, after being stuck for years at 8%, so a slightly improvement. But, 2022 is also the year where in Afghanistan, university education for women was suspended, where in Iran, a young woman named Masha Amini was killed because her wearing of the hijab was likely not correct, where in a cosmopolitan city like New York, domestic violence on women was 31%, where in Brazil, during COVID, one woman was raped every 10 minutes and one murder every seven hours, and the list goes on and on. Clearly, there is a problem, a problem of global proportions, with 50% of the population being abused and victimized. We must act now, if we don't want to wait 300 years to achieve gender equality, equality as estimated by the United Nations. So, where can we start? Definitely by changing the culture, because that's the beginning of any change as history has shown us over and over again. As filmmakers, we're giving our contribution by creating content that can change the narrative, therefore the culture. However, this is not an easy task, because in the media industry too, there is a big problem of disparity. And on top of that, there is also the problem of lack of representation. For example, 
According to the USC Annaberg study, in the year 2020, women directors were 15% of the top 100 movies. Then there was a step back, as usual. In 2021, the number went down to 12.7%, and in 2022, further down to 9%. It is clear that we have to tackle the problem from all sides. This is what We Do It Together mission is, produce media content and movies by women, about women, for everyone. We are more than 80 of us, men and women, from different parts of the world, united in one nation, empowering movie through movies and media. And I'm happy to announce that we are in the process of bringing We Do It Together in 2023 to other countries, beginning with Brazil, Italy, India, and Saudi Arabia, to give a voice to those women who are not allowed to have one and become the first nonprofit global studio dedicated to the empowerment of women. So it doesn't take years and years just to make a movie like this one, Tell It Like a Woman, is a feature film that represents exactly what We Do It Together does. A movie directed by eight extraordinary women directors with eight wonderful actresses. I would like to thank my producer partners, Lady Monica Bacardi, Lucas Akoskink, and a special thanks to Andrea Iervolino for believing in us, in this movie, and in our missions since the beginning. This has been a very long journey. It took us six years to produce this movie through extremely difficult times, but we never gave up because of the beauty and the significance of this film, its powerful message and its social impact. The theme song, the theme song of the movie Applause, written by the legendary songwriter Diane Warren and performed by Sophia Carter is literally an anthem for all women of the world and has just received this year an Academy Award nomination for Best Original Song. I would like to conclude by asking each one of you in this room, game changers, diplomats, and distinguished guests, to please join us now in this critical journey of changing the narrative about women and creating a new paradigm. We need your help so we, so we can all rise up together, side by side. We can all have a voice now without waiting 300 years. And we can make it happen only if we do it together. Without further ado, let's get started. Please enjoy the movie. We hope you enjoy the movie, undoubtedly an impactful movie that conveys a powerful message and stirs strong emotions. We believe it also represents a great opportunity to share ideas and views on women's struggles and challenges in today's society. Each of these stories offers a unique perspective from real life, shedding light on the struggle and pain women experience every day. At the same time, they show the tremendous strength and bravery women have. A fresh start rests on an individual ability to overcome challenges, but also on a community support. It takes a village to change the game. Without further ado, I now leave the floor to Chiara, who will moderate a panel discussion with some of the directors and actresses that make up the heart and soul of Tell It Like a Woman. Thank you. Please, Lina Yadav, Catherine Hardwick, Kim Carter, Leonor Varela, and Jasmine Louvre, please join us.
Well, thank you for this wonderful movie that all of you uh, made. And I would like, um, since we, time is of the essence, so um, I will start right away with a question. And let's try to keep it in a, in a minute, each question. And uh, Catherine, you've been involved in Tally Like a Woman since the beginning. And you have wrote uh, Pepsi and Kim, uh, Elbows Deep. And you directed the, the music video, the dance version of the music video, and you directed Elbows Deep. And on top of that, you uh, suggested the title of the movie. So, <laughs> so let's start with you. How was this experience? Well, I thought it was exciting that you had this idea. Can you guys hear me? Uh, uh, no? Oh, Hello? How about this? Okay. Uh, what a an exciting idea that, you know, all these directors from around the world would direct something. So I wanted to find uh, inspiring women like Kim. <laughs> uh, <whoa. laughs> the real Kim Carter. I read about her. I went down to her, her offices and met her. And she told me that incredible story about, you know, this moment where she could have gone one way. Uh, killed somebody or she could have gone to um, you know rehab and made herself into the amazing person she is now and I thought I, I want to tell that story and then which is pretty cool <laughs> yeah and then another incredible one where's Dr. P Susan Partovi who is our renegade oh yeah right there yay the renegade MD of Skid Row <laughs> um I found out about her incredible story and how she goes and works with the most vulnerable people and, you know, and then uh, Jasmine is our beautiful nurse in the show. Yay. And so I just was very excited to tell these two stories about these amazing women that people should know about and the people they care for, too. Um, Leonor, um, tell us about your inv involvement. It's very personal for you. Tell us a little bit about it. Yes, um, indeed, Kara. Well, you know it very well because I became a member of the board of We Do It Together once you um, brought this project to my husband, Lucas Akoskin, who's also the producer of this movie. And I immediately wanted and felt very compelled to join the board of directors because... I've been working in this industry, in the film industry, for 30 years, and I, I could really see the change, but I could see how much more needed to be changed, and how much being um, the object really bothered me. How many times I was asked to be on the cover of Playboy, or do things that just really didn't make me feel comfortable as a female, and how important it is for that narrative to come from us, and those images. I remember as a Latin girl, seeing the first Talisa Soto being in a James Bond girl, I was like, Wow, somebody like me. And so I, I really knew the importance of telling the stories with our voices, with our faces. And so when the opportunity in the movie came together, Lucia Puenzo, who is the director of the Lago Nego segment, invited me to be a part of this, which I was obviously very happy and honored to do. And also met a great friend. Eva Longoria has become a sister of mine, and it's been such a beautiful um, gift to have a sister out of this female-driven project. Yes, that's very true. We are all bonding all the time. We're traveling together. We're, we're a community now. <laughs> so, um, Kim, um, how, I mean, your story is incredible. And how did you um, transform your pain and suffering and turn it into a passion and purpose? First of all, I want to say, yeah, United Nations! <laughs> It is Women's History Month, and we are here. We ain't going nowhere. We're not going to be invisible no more. <laughs> That's what I want to say. <laughs> you know, when I think about the pain and the suffering, I had two. I could have easily decided that my life was not worth living. But see, the little girl inside, she was like, it's not over yet. We're going to have to overcome some stuff and do some things, but we're going to use that pain and suffering not as a, as a shame or a guilt, but as power. I want to hear you say power. 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 We're going to 
use that pain for passion and purpose, and we're going to walk into our power because we are women and we have birthed this nation. <laughs> That's how I did it. <laughs> Lena, uh, tell us a little bit, how, what does it mean to be a woman director in India? Um, it, honestly, I mean, over the years, um, the representation of women in filmmaking has increased, but like we heard in the statistics, it's very, very slow. Um, it comes with some challenges, and I believe those are challenges that are worldwide, not just specific to India. Um, but yeah, we, we just got to do it. <laughs> Like she said, we just need to do it, and that's the way I function. When I need to do it, I just need to do it. And always, I do find a way. So. <laughs> Thank you. And Jasmine, what was your experience in Tell It Like a Woman? My experience on Tell It Like a Woman was like no other. So I've been on several sets before, but it's always been male dominant. And being on a full woman production cast, just everything was mind blowing and it was such a great experience. I enjoyed every minute of it. Everyone was super nice. Everyone was so supportive. And I hope and pray that, man, that this continues and that I can be on more women dominant cast because it was just great to be a woman and go to the director and she's a woman and go, you know, the producer and my castmates. It was an amazing experience and I hope I can continue to experience that more in the future. Um, Catherine, you are one of the most successful female directors, having done Twilight to the Oscar nominee movie 13. Please tell us your experience in the treatment of women in the industry. Um, well, yeah, it's a tough one because I, I got to direct the movie Twilight because they didn't think it was going to be a hit. All the studios, you know, uh, didn't. So they thought, oh, we'll just hire a woman. You know, <laughs> uh, it wasn't intended to be the blockbuster. It was a little tiny, you know, studio, a uh, brand new film company summit. So once it became a hit, unfortunately, all the other movies after mine, which were four more Twilights, were all directed by men. And then they did five more movies like Hunger Games that were based on a young woman, written uh, books by women, but all directed by men. So they didn't really like learn the lesson, you know, like women could direct this movie. And um, I think that was disappointing for me. I was disappointed after that, even though I had a movie that made $400 million, it was hard to get another job. Oh, that was just a fluke, you know, that was uh, a special circumstance. I was turned down from uh, even interviewing for other jobs because we think a guy should direct this because this is, has action in it or it has visual effects. So people really, you know, it's a challenge. Yeah, it is. <laughs> And Leonor, as a mother, why is having the motherhood narrative important in media or in general, the narrative of women as a subject, not an, as an object? I have a little girl, she's eight years old. And for me, to, for her to experience this world in a way that is kinder to women than it was to me is very important. Not only as a female, but as a human being too, the type of planet we're leaving behind and most importantly, the culture that she's being fed and how I try to shield her from media or her things because I think it's so toxic or social media. And so for me to be a part of something like this is very important. I want her to see her mom doing things that are gonna make this world hopefully better, not only for us, but for the entire human race. Kim, how has life placed you on the front line to fight against women's inequality? 
Well, I didn't know inside of me was going to be this fire that would just be raging and burning. And it was an evolution of finding my voice and my power. And so I found myself on the front lines fighting for women's rights in our areas, in the areas of housing. I fight for women to get their children back out of the foster care system. I fight, fight for people to be able to get equal pay. I mean, I fight for so many rights, I'm just always fighting. And it's like, well, how did I get here? You know? I find myself in a room, a male-dominated room, being the only voice of reason like if you would just listen <laughs> and do what I say do we might be able to get this thing solved and I found out that I was a revolutionary and that somewhere in my DNA I must be related to a Harriet Tubman or a Fang Lou Hamer a little bit of Marcus Garvey I would like to think of King sometime but I don't think we really related but I just know that in my DNA there is a person that says we're going to stand up so I'm going to tell you, stand up, give yourself an applause because we do deserve it, because we are here. And we get it done. So when I think about we do it together, we did that. <laughs> we did that. We will continue to raise the voices of women and our stories. See, the only thing about we do it together, as you guys have to realize, it's not telling a woman's story. It's telling the woman's story. My story was told by... Catherine Hardy when she written it, but Taraji P. Henson, shout out to her, she directed that movie. And Jennifer Huston, she just brought it on on. Y'all saw what she did, right? <laughs> and so when I sat there and watched it being filmed, it was authentic and it was real. And, I, and I, can, I can appreciate being a part of something that's so much bigger than us. We're one dot in this whole big old world, but we gotta be a good dot. And we gotta be a dot that's seen and heard, okay? <laughs> Lina, how do you feel about representing India with your movie in this amazing mix of female talent from across the world that Telic Like a Woman has brought together? I'm extremely honored to be part of this uh, film. And just this movement, we do it together, I think is such an important and powerful voice that we need today. Um, Though it's unfortunate that we have to create something like this to even have a voice, but I'm grateful that We Do It Together is doing, you know, uh, bringing women's stories uh, made by women for everybody because we have to do it together. We can't do it just by women alone. We have to do it together. Uh, Jasmine, why did you decide to use comedy to empower women? So I've done comedy for several years, and to give a little backstory, I first started doing comedy because um, comedy is a very male-dominant field. And shout out to the ladies because we're funny too, okay? And you know, I, I feel like comedy just empowers women because Comedy brings a message. So like there's a way of getting a message across and that's comedy. And I feel like that bringing comedy, it, it brought more of a voice to women. Um, and I don't know, I, so basically long story short, I, I started doing it because I wanted to be a voice for women. Like I said, comedy is such a male dominant field that you don't necessarily see it. And I've done sketches, I've done, I, I write comedy and everything. And because of me and a lot of other women, I feel like we have empowered other younger women to do the same thing, to write, to, to act, to everything. And I feel like that is great because comedy brings that message. And I'm just um, happy to be a woman that can empower other women. Um, Catherine, why uh, is a movement like We Do It Together important to you? Uh, well, I think it's, it's like we heard all the great st uh, horrible statistics at the beginning of this. And, you know, we do want to change it. We do want to hear, like, interesting, wild stories. I love seeing a story about a woman, you know, with her kids and making all the food. You know, a whole other world that I never experienced, you know, in, in all these stories. So just um, seeing women as a subject and really understanding their lives, it's very exciting, you know. So thank you for doing this, Kiara. Thank you. Leonor, 
how is to be a Latina in the industry? Well, let me tell you, it ain't easy. And I think, of, um, I don't want to bore you with statistics, but it's, it's, it's very telling that for every dollar uh, a white male makes in the United States, a Latina will make just a little more than half, 53 cents. And that's much less than a white woman will make, which is close to 83 cents a dollar. That translates also to my industry, not only to us Latinas, but us women in general. There are few, very few cases in which a male a lead in a movie will say, it ain't fair that she's getting paid a third of, or a fourth or an eighth of what I'm getting paid. She should getting, be getting equal pay. And those things are, we're starting to see them populate the change of the landscape of my industry, of the movie industry. But for us Latinas, thank God there's a few trailblazers that are doing incredible work that really take on the patriarchy and the way things have been established, like Zoe Saldana or Eva Langoria, and that are really demanding to be the one, to be equally respected, paid, and considered. And also that our stories are being told, that finally Latin, Latin thanks to the platforms like Netflix and Amazon, our stories are also being seen across the world. My culture is also has more visibility. So that, that pleases me greatly. I understand how much there is left to do, but I also am very happy to see the seeds of change sprouting at this point. Thank you. Kim, tell us when you received the phone call that Jennifer Hudson was doing your movie and how do you feel about that, that your, your story has been represented in the movie? So, so first of all, so my name is Kim Carter. You guys can tell I have a really dynamic personality. And so uh, when I was approached by Catherine Hartley about the movie, I had just became a top 10 CNN hero. So out of 50,000 nominations in eight different countries, I made it to the top 10. So I had a lot of folks calling me. Some was kind of cuckoo, you know? And so when she approached me, I was like, okay, this is, seems real. I've researched her. She's real. Okay, this might happen. So I was minding my business in my house one day, and I get a phone call that says, hey, um, you know, I'm the assistant to Taraji P. Henson. I'm like, Cookie from Empire, that Taraji P. Henson? <laughs> and they said, yes, well, she's going to, um, do you have a moment to get on Zoom? I'm like, yeah, I can get on Zoom. Because the COVID, we all learn how to do Zoom on the COVID, right? So I get on Zoom, too. So I'm sitting there, and she gets on. She has, like, a little face mask on. Like, she just got on there. Hey, girl, I was like, Cookie, <laughs> is that you? <laughs> And she was like, yes, yes, I want you to know that I've been talking to Catherine. I think your story is really great. And um, I'm dying. I would love to direct it. And she was like, well, who do you want to play you? And I was like, Cookie? And she was like, no, I'm on this side of the camera. And she said, I'm going to find somebody and I'll get back with you. So I was like, okay. So then I would be driving sometimes. She would call, hey, Kim. I'd be like, Jemani, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I picture myself. And then so... She said, can we get on Zoom tomorrow? Okay, we get on Zoom, and I'm sitting on the screen, and then voila, there goes Jennifer Hudson. All I could do was say, OMG, you brought the diva to the screen. Jennifer Hudson, the 17th Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony winning Jennifer Hudson with her own Jennifer Hudson show. That Jennifer Hudson right there, right, was on the screen talking to me. Now, you know, I think good of my stuff, but that day I was like, oh my, I'm pitching myself, pitching myself. And so, you know, if you saw the story, you know, I have to be very vulnerable in that, right? But see, the power comes from being vulnerable because there's some woman somewhere right now that's in some kind of pain or some kind of suffering, and she needs to know she can come out of that and stand on all ten of her toes and go from breaking laws to making laws, from being homeless to building affordable housing. She needs to know that it's possible. So my story has to be authentic. So Jennifer Hudson playing me, it was perfect. Getting a call, it was perfect. And even more perfect is being right here. We ain't in the, United, we ain't in the White House. We in the United Nations. Y'all don't hear me, though. We, in, we with the world right now. We with the world. This is big. This is big. So that's how I'm feeling. Kim Carter, 4408 on Instagram. I wrote a book. It's called Waking Up to My Purpose. You can find that on our website, www.timeforchangefoundation.org. Um, 
um, Lina, since uh, um, We Do Together is about making women the subject in the film narrative, I'm curious, how do female-driven film to India? Um, not very well. Um, they are f so culturally, we are a very star-obsessed uh, culture. And uh, to reach a point where your film does well, you have to be objectified for many, many years through many, many films to then deserve a subject <laughs> to do well, you know. So um, a lot of films were made with great actors, but not necessarily big stars, don't really get watched, get boxed in female-oriented film, and that's not a good word um, in the commercial sense in cinemas. So, um, yeah, I need a huge change there. <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you. Last question for Jasmine. You're very active in social media. So what are the positive effects of social media has made on empowering women? Um, I would say it definitely gives women like me a voice. Uh, social media is the new freedom of speech. And I think social media is very empowering because it gives women um, another voice. We've been silenced for so long. And social media is a great way for women like me and other women to voice our opinions and another, like I said, another way of freedom of speech and I think it's very empowering. Thank you. Well, thank you all for being here tonight. I would like to call on stage uh, uh, Andrea Yervolino and Luca Sakowski and uh, we'll take some picture and thank you everybody. Woo woo!